Do you remember when the world went crazy about this? It was 2022 and this was the first ever image of the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. People were awestruck by this image of the supermassive black hole lurking at the heart of our galaxy and it was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, the EHT. Before 2019, black holes were just theoretical objects predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. They were never directly observed. This image provided the first concrete visual evidence that there was a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. But plot twist, scientists now believe that this image is wrong. Oops. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this video we're going to be talking about why the black hole at the center of our galaxy may not look like what we think it does. So let's begin. In 2019, a team of scientists using the Event Horizon Telescope, the EHT, made a history. They took the first ever picture of a black hole. Now, this was a massive deal because no one had ever seen one before. Before this, black holes were just theoretical objects. They were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, but never directly observed. The picture showed the black hole in the middle of the galaxy M87, and it looked like a dark shadow surrounded by a bright orange glow. It was like something out of a sci-fi movie. They called it M87 Star. This image provided the first concrete visual evidence of the existence of a black hole, and no doubt it helped the 2020 Nobel Prize being awarded to the work on black holes. But it's not just a pretty picture, countless science results were also produced from this one image too. The image confirmed what general relativity predicted for the shadow of a spinning black hole, a Kerr black hole. And then just three years later, the EHT imaged the center of our own galaxy and our own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star. Now previously, people thought it would be very challenging, if not impossible, for EHT to see Sagittarius A star. And this is because it exhibits rapid variability in its brightness and its structure. It changes on timescales of minutes. Unlike M87 star, which is much more massive and thus changes more slowly, Sagittarius A star is tiny and it exhibits dynamical changes on very short timescales. Now, this variability posed a challenge for traditional interferometric imaging techniques, which assume that the source is static, because rapid changes will blur and smear out the data. It's just like when you're trying to take a photo at nighttime, you need to be super still or your image will become blurry. But also interstellar scattering, this is an effect caused by the turbulence in the interstellar medium, the medium in between the stars, between Earth and the galactic center. This distorts and blurs the radio waves emitted by Sagittarius A star. So the fact that they even managed to make this image was just huge news, mind blown. But now scientists at the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan have reanalyzed the data from the Event Horizon Telescope and proposed that the accretion disk, the swirling mass of superheated gas around Sagittarius A star, may be more elongated than initially depicted in that image. They're really concerned that this ring-like structure isn't real, but it's just an artifact, that the black hole shadow isn't really a shadow at all, but caused by the way that the EHT collaboration created their image. And this could mean that all of the science is wrong too. You see, to make the image, the EHT is not a single telescope, but a network of radio telescopes located all over the world. And by combining the data from these telescopes, scientists create essentially a virtual Earth-sized telescope, a massive telescope with unprecedented resolving power. This technique is called Very Long Baseline Interferometry, VLBI. 
Now, the radio telescopes don't measure images directly. Instead, each pair of telescopes will measure interference patterns created when radio waves from the source reach them at slightly different times. These patterns will encode information about spatial frequency of the source, i.e. the level of detail in the image. So low spatial frequencies will correspond to broad, smooth structures, while high spatial frequencies will capture finer details. These spatial frequencies are recorded in what we call the UV plane. The data collected from the UV plane needs to be transformed into an image in real space. And to do this, they use Fourier transforms. Fourier transforms are mathematical tools that relate the spatial frequency domain to the spatial or image domain. And the inverse Fourier transform takes the information from the UV plane, the spatial frequency data that these telescopes have collected, and reconstructs what the image would look like in real space. Now, the EHT's UV coverage is very sparse. Not all spatial frequencies are sampled because we've got a limited number of telescopes. So the raw image produced by this process is not perfect and often it appears noisy or incomplete. So to refine the image, reconstruction and deconvolution algorithms are applied. The deconvolution algorithms will remove the effects of the point spread function, the PSF. And this is what describes how a point source or a dot would look through an imaging system. It essentially acts like a calibration to the system, showing how it responds to point sources. So for example, if you pointed the telescope at a star and it wasn't round, but instead elliptical because it's been distorted by things like looking through the atmosphere or like various instrumental like effects, then you would deconvolve the image with the measured PSF to correct it until that star actually looks round, until it looks like what you expect it to look like. If certain scales of structure are not well sampled, then the reconstruction algorithms will fill in gaps based on the limited data. And then the final image will show structures such as the glowing ring around the shadow of the black hole, where the ring is a product of the gravitational bending of light and the high speed rotation of the gas near the event horizon of the black hole. But there's a problem, and that problem is that Firstly, the UV space is sparse, so some scales of the structure are just not captured, they're not well sampled. The reconstruction algorithms will then go in and fill in those gaps based on the limited data, potentially giving rise to artificial structures that are not physically there. It's like kind of like AI when they kind of make up things. But also, because of this, the PSF might also not be accurate. It's bumpy with spurious peaks and trowels. And if you have inaccuracies in the PSF, then these could be translated into artifacts in the final image, potentially leading to misinterpretation of the black hole structure. And one clear thing that supports this study's claim is that the diameter of the shadow of Sagittarius A star is very close, very similar to the spacing between the main beam and the first lobe of the PSF. So the main beam is the central highest intensity region of the PSF. It represents the core response of the imaging system to a point source. And then those side lobes are those smaller intensity rings or structures around that main beam. Now, these arise due to the diffraction and interference patterns created by the finite size of the telescope aperture. But in our case of radio telescopes, it's the interferometric array, so the distribution and arrangement of telescopes. Now, they also show in their study that ring light structures similar to the one identified as the black hole shadow in the Sagittarius A star image can actually be produced from simulated non-ring-like data when using EHT's UV coverage and imaging process. Now, this suggests that the ring-like structure might not be a real feature of Sagittarius A star, but instead just an artifact of the imaging process. 
So they argue this suggests a potential problem in the deconvolution of the PSF during the imaging process. And the authors also went and did an independent analysis using conventional methods to produce their own version of the image. And their image was a better fit to the data but it reveals that the elongated east-west side structure, which is brighter than the western half, um, and this is consistent with previous observations of Sagittarius A star. This elongated structure is probably part of the accretion disk and they find it to be rotating at a speed of about 60% of the speed of light. But the ring is likely just an artifact and not real. Imaging Sagittarius A star due to its short timescale variability and EHT's sparse UV coverage is challenging. And even these new authors' result might not be right. They're going to need a lot more telescopes to obtain reliable images of Sagittarius A star. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.